Deutschland, Deutschland, a city of contradictions and a city of rich history. It's got the hotel where Michael Jackson dangled a baby. It's got a government building with a hat. And it's the home of the dreaded Currywurst. But it's also famous for its beer, its pills, and its pills. Ah. Uh, and, and it's modern beers too, but there's a battle in Berlin, from new styles to old Grinsgebot. We sent out our intrepid reporter and professional drunk Johnny Garrett to find out was is was. Hi guys, welcome to the Craft Beer Channel. Uh, today I am in sunny, sunny Berlin. That's right, we are on the road. Uh, and I'm in Prater Beer Garden. It's just around the corner from my hotel. I'm down here uh, for the Craft Brewers Association Conference, uh, in which I'm speaking. They've let, they've let me speak live, without editing. Along with the UK, Belgium and the Czech Republic, Germany is regarded as one of the homes of beer. In fact, the oldest functioning brewery in the world, Stefan, is in the south of the country near Munich. But when it comes to craft beer and new styles, it's a long way behind and wears its history heavily. Part of that is the Reinheitsgebot, an act passed 500 years ago that stated that beer could only have four ingredients, water, barley, hops, and yeast. So that meant no oats, no fruits, no barrel aging. You can still brew drinks including those ingredients, but you can't call them beer. I caught up with Philip, founder of the brew pub Hops and Barley in Friedrichshain and one of the first brew pubs to open in the new wave to find out how it affected him as a brewer starting a business. So you can, range. <laughs> in, in Germany, you can brew whatever you like, but if you yeah. want to call it beer, yeah. it has to yeah. follow the Reinskebord. Yeah. And when, when was the Reinskebord introduced? So it was 1516. Really? So a long, long yeah. time ago. Yeah. Um, um, do you think it needs changing or abolishing? Or yeah, what? I think definitely they have to, have to make other rules. Do Germany, German drinkers, do they look for the Rheinsker book? Do they want to see it on I the think it's a traditional green class, really think it's, yeah, it's a typical German good one. Yeah. I think it's a clean beer if it sends Rheinsker Boot, of course. Yeah. Um, I think it's also good that you see on the bottle, brewed due to the purity law, but you have to, uh, maybe you have two sides of beer then. If you yeah. want to have purity law beer, you can buy it, but why not other styles? Yeah, yeah it should, should be expanded and then yeah. it can be like a way to yeah. separate bad yeah. beer yeah. and well brewed beer. Yeah. Yeah. So, while the Reinheitsgebot ensures no brewer can put crap stuff like corn, rice and chemicals in their beer, it's stifling creativity. Only recently have German brew schools started teaching styles other than their Hells, Pills, Weiss and Dunkels. The ability to brew to the so-called German purity law also gives dull, mass-produced beer a strong marketing tool that more exciting artisan brewers just can't use, which has led to German drinkers' taste becoming less discerning, as David, senior editor of Ex Berliner magazine, explains. I have a feeling that most of the residents of the area would probably rather just drink a 35 cent Sternberg from the Lidl if they have the opportunity. Although Germany obviously has a great brewing tradition, it's in the south. The north tends to be left wing and intellectual and poor and not particularly interested in, in a sensuality. Food, drink, doesn't really matter. It's what gets the job done. You go south in Germany and everybody laughs a lot. Oh, nobody's yelling at you like they do here all the time. You know, they sit in the long, you know, these long beer tables, they're drinking delicious beer, eating the, the best of German food, and they're all voting right wing. You know, semiotics isn't money, it's probably good beer. I, I would say that, but in fact, in Berlin, no one has any money or a great beer. Oh, oh, okay. But it's not all doom and gloom. Monopolies breed subversive cultures, and fighting against the shackles are a new generation of craft brewers. I headed to Kreuzberg to meet Johannes Heidenpeter, who brews underneath a street food market and sells his beer in a hidden corner of this foodie paradise. Um, so tell me, how did you get started in this space? 
I, I met the guys here because I, um, I know them from a, from a former project and uh, I sh showed them my, my home brews, my former home brews. I had a meeting and uh, they, they wanted me to start. Yeah, they helped you make a bar. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And that is in so we, we took a look in your brewery, which is underneath where we are, and it's it's unlike any other brewery I've been in. Like you must not see a lot of light because you get <laughs> down in the cellar. Um, but that's all built, that's put together by you, that brewery completely from scratch. Yeah, in a way, yes. I mean, uh, it was not completely scratch. <laughs> so, I mean, it's really, really self-made brewery without a lot of uh, money invested. So. Um, I started at the ground and now I'm building up a little bit of When did you start? When was your first brew down there? So the first brew was in uh, 2012, in September, I think, something, something like this. I made a saison here, or a startup here. That's your first beer? Yeah, it was my first beer. Yeah. So what's next? Are you going to be expanding downstairs? Or? Yeah, we will do small steps. Um, yeah, everything is on a good, good way. We yeah, are starting with uh, barrel aging beers. Yeah, so the barrels downstairs. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is the fun stuff. So uh, I'm really looking forward to doing more stuff like this. While Haydn Peters beer is struggling to make it out of Berlin. Other breweries are making noise internationally. Brauchen's Kenneth from Mikkelstadt near Frankfurt have been uber hopping beers and wowing drinkers all over Europe. I caught up with the founder Alex to ask how he started brewing modern beers so close to Germany's traditional beer heartland. What made you decide to go you know, go hoppy and use these American influences? Well, uh, to be honest, it was the influence of BrewDog. I had the first uh, IPA I drank was the Punk IPA from BrewDog. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was changing everything what I knew about beer. Before that I was brewing uh, traditional classical German beer style for many many years in a brew pub and uh, to find the beer that is so different than everything I knew before it was amazing for me and I never it never let me uh, go. Uh, during the time I was working uh, in the brew pub at the weekend I started to make my own recipes with uh, IPAs. So I started to brew beers on the weekend as well in a small 50 liter batch system. Um, yeah, and I made a lot of different recipes with a lot of different hops. Yeah, it was more than 100 recipes, I think. And the four best recipes I decided last year uh, to make my own uh, beer business now. And what, what's the response been? Uh, particularly down, I guess down south where they have a very, a very set sort of love of beer. Is it getting a good response? Germans are very... Uh, they, first they look, then they think and then they do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so it's very slow, slower. maybe yeah. next year they will start to notice that there are uh, other beers, but but you have to do everything by your own. You have to go to the people and say, hey, try this beer. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> Yeah. And, and what that, about that's the work from us, us small breweries. We are doing this since uh, two years now, I think, and uh, we started um, to, to teach the people what beer can, can be uh, if you let it go, if you let it um, be. Wandering around the festival, I got a sense of a scene still finding its feet. But given that Germany had its first ever craft beer festival just 15 months ago, they've come a long way fast. The country has the potential to once more become the session kings of the world whether through old school pills like Lemkes or super modern ones like Pfefferberg's or modern reworkings like Brauchen's Keller's Amasi and Heiden Peter's Raspberry Pale. Germany has always had great beer, so much so that it's actually held it back. But now my new friends have got it underway, the main challenge is convincing drinkers to come with them.